Hi guys, I uh, still haven't got my software sorted out, so I'm still recording on this uh, little phone. This video is not for everybody. I'm working on a little uh, prototype uh, heater, and uh, I, I'll give you some details about what it's all about. Um, while we're passing through, the, the room temperature here is 20 degrees, and that's oh, that, that's a picture. Look at that. My granddad uh, drew that pen and ink over a hundred years ago. I love that. Uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> um, so, um, as I said in an earlier video, I've got interested in uh, uh, jewellery making, a little bit of silver smithing. Uh, nothing complicated. I'm I'm just playing. But one of the things I want to do is I want to add gold to the silver. And gold is so fabulously expensive, it really, you know, precludes using it. Uh, I, I can't do that. It's ridiculous. Um, but there's a process called kombu. Um, yeah, kombu. And um, it's a process whereby um gold um is applied or gold foil is applied to the surface of silver and in order to do that you clean the silver you'll see the process on youtube and then you heat it to somewhere between 260 centigrade to 370 centigrade or 500 fahrenheit 700 fahrenheit and typically people uh, do this process over um, other amateurs do it over um, uh, an electric cooker. They have a, a six inch hot plate, uh, which is running at a kilowatt, so a thousand watts. And that thing is, uh, it's got a, a mass, a massive sort of surface area, 113 uh, inches square, radiating um, 700 degrees Fahrenheit at you, or 370, uh, and it's a little uncomfortable. And it's something I want to have a go at. I haven't tried it at all, but I thought, I'm not going to mess about like that. I can buy a little heater like that very cheaply, but I don't want a, another big heater or something like that. So I thought, I'll make uh, a very small one. And... This is just a, a block of metal. I'll give you more details in a, in a moment. Um, but it's um, uh, 30 millimetres by 30 millimetres square. And realistically, I'm not going to make any jewellery uh, that, that has gold um, foil on it that's any bigger than that. So um, that is, if that's my... 30 millimeters squared that is some 78 times smaller than that so it means that the radiated heat coming up into your face or onto your arms there'll be 78 uh, percent uh, <laughs> less surface area radiating still be the same temperatures or that's my target but what i'm going to tell you is i haven't switched this on yet um, i have a high degree of confidence but I thought I'd share this with you. I've made things like this in the past. This is um, uh, a little block of steel. It's got some uh, quartz glass tube through it. And I've uh, put a, a spiral element through there. I can't even remember what that for, uh, what I, I did that for. I've been through my <laughs> extensive junk um, and my, my, my bench here is uh, like the bottom of a baby's pram again. And these are different uh, heating elements that I've played with. And they are all um, uh, made out of a, a, a spiral element like this. Um, well, there's, there's a new one. Uh, this was uh, Southern Elements in the UK. Uh, spiral element, 1,000 watts at uh, 230 to 250 volts. 
I don't know if Southern Elements are still going. I hope they are. Um, but that's a, a thousand watt element at those voltages. So what I've done, oh, and that would be the same element that people use in a in a six inch uh, diameter hot plate, thousand watts. So it wouldn't look like that. It'd be uh, encapsulated in a, a mineral powder. But it occurred to me, I can um, cut this down to a, a, a more suitable size for what I want. And I've got this nice old low voltage power supply here. And um, I thought, well, if I can run a little element uh, at a, a suitable voltage, um, then I can I can use this. This is capable of 30 volts at 3 amps, and that won't hurt me. That's 30 volts, won't it? Uh, electrocute you. Um, uh, so I've split this element up to give me 10 ohms, which will equate to 90 watts which is the um, uh, 30 volts times 3 amps um, so in in here if it's all successful I'll take it out after and show you uh, in here I've got just two spiral elements so as this one has got three spiral elements in quartz tubes in a metal block this one's just got two I say I haven't switched it on. Uh, I have a high degree of optimism. <laughs> oh, this is a, um, uh, a a socket box, uh, the sort of uh, box that goes in the wall behind uh, a thing like that. Um, and I've lined it with uh, silver foil like this, and I've put vermiculite. I've been out this morning. And I bought this bag of vermiculite. Uh, I got this from a, a sort of garden center place. Um, vermiculite, you see, it's, uh, this, these granules, these granules that I've thrown everywhere. Uh, vermiculite should be good for about uh, 1000 degrees centigrade, um, which is uh, way, way uh, above anything that we need here. So I'm going to switch it on, and believe it or not, I'm switching this block on for the first time. Um, uh, so I've got a thermocouple here, and uh, okay, 19.8, and I, I showed you the room thermostat when we walked in. Um, so that's the temperature of that block. Um, I switch the power supply on. And I'm, I'm going to go for full power, <laughs> which I, I know the element is 10 ohms. So that there's my um, 30 volt, 3 amps. Um, and there's that bit. Um, nothing very interesting happening there yet. The temperature's not coming through. So on the YouTube video, I know I can cut bits out so I'll I'll cut out the the bits um, so what's happening inside inside this block and say it looks like this so and we're measuring the temperature uh, effectively at the top of this steel block so I've got a heat a fair chunk of steel um, and it hasn't got the uh, the middle element in there um, so we'll see what happens um, because of the timing on well I can time it on um, uh, when I make the video and tell you how long it takes to get to temperature and I'm assuming or hoping <laughs> that it will get to temperature so we're up to uh, uh, there well, we're at we're at boiling point now so for an electric hot plate you might say yeah you you might expect that sort of temperature rise and remember the object of the exercise here was to have something that's not a bigger heat source than one would practically want 
and a stress. This is just <laughs> a, a, a prototype, me rambling about a prototype and the assumption it uh, works, I'll tidy it all up and make uh, something uh, a, a bit more practical. So we're at a, a 163 and um, I'm, I'm looking for at least uh, 260 degrees. So um, I don't know if you can see the, I don't think I can zoom in on this uh, thing. Just a little under three amps there. I could uh, I could take a turn or two off. Oh, why is that? Okay, so two hundred and thirty. I should point out this isn't a proper thermocouple. This is actually a, a, a Type K thermocouple extension cable, and I've simply twisted, uh, stripped it off, and twisted the ends together. So it's the same dissimilar metals as you have uh, in a thermocouple, um, uh, but I haven't welded it. The that's interesting. Um, you see those four, four bits have gone blue there. Uh, they've just, the metal is just going blue and that's uh, 282 degrees. Um, the, this block is the same as the one in the vermiculite. And what I did, I filled those holes, our threaded holes. I, I screwed a, a little bolt in there very hard as as much as I could and then cut it off and filed it and you can see they've gone uh, if I can get it right it's gone this beautiful electric blue and what I'm anticipating of course is that the whole block uh, changes uh, color um, well we're up to 320 there Say I had a high level of confidence in it, but I must admit I'm a little bit surprised that it didn't heat more rapidly, um, because in terms of watts per square inch or per square millimeter, I've got more watts per square millimeter than you would have in a uh, a six inch hot plate. Okay, three hundred and sixty. Um, I'm looking for 370, aren't I? Yeah, so uh, 370 is my target temperature as, as a maximum. Um, 370, I've arrived. Okay, so uh, in Fahrenheit, yeah, 710. I'm back in centigrade, if I can see it. I think in centigrade for temperature, um, but with regards to dimensions, I was brought up uh, using both um, imperial and metric, which is very convenient. Um, okay, so they uh, from the internet, it's very difficult to get any idea about the accurate temperature that people use. Um, they say, and I've actually trimmed a bit of uh, lollipop stick here, they say they use a, a, a toothpick and if it smokes, it's hot enough. Um, uh, well, I guess uh, probably set the smoke alarms off. I don't know if you can see that. But <laughs> um, there's no question about that. I can see the smoke if... Yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, I think I've, I've arrived. I've, I've achieved what I set out to achieve. I've also pulled the thermocouple away. 
Um, Okay, so um, that's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm pleased it worked because um, I wouldn't have been able to post the video otherwise. Okay, I, um, I'll turn that down, turn it off, and um, I'll show you what it is. Turn that off. Um, just get a pair of cutters. This is um, this is quartz tube. If you wanted to make something like this, um, and you 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 need a low voltage power supply. Don't try that like this. Don't try and make something and plug it into your power supply into your mains electrical supplier. I know the Americans have one hundred and ten, so it's a bit safer, but. Um, you really need a power supply. Oh, what I was going to say is this, of course, will allow me to adjust the temperature, not with a thermocop or control, but simply turn the the, uh, the voltage down. I don't think the kombu process is desperately critical, um, but I can't find out. But hopefully with this, I'll be able to make some real temperature measurements and... Uh, you know, tell people what I can achieve with it. So that's the um, uh, the hot plate. Um, if you wanted to make one of these yourselves and you you, you haven't got quartz glass, um, you could probably buy some uh, fuses, uh, ceramic fuses, take the end caps off, drill the ends off, and you've got ceramic tube that's... Uh, Easy and likewise for this, um, uh, you could put um, uh, old fuses uh, over there. Um, okay. Oh, right. Um, yeah, that's the the lump of metal. I think for people that know about kombu and what they're using, they probably say, "Yep, that'd be big enough for me. I'll make earrings or brooches and." That, that's fine. But the magic thing about this is because it's such a small area, it's not hurting me. Um, the box is relatively cool. I'm, I'm, I'm holding it in my hand. Um, and if I tip the powder out, the uh, vermiculite, Should be um, there, it's just a, a socket box. Um, anyway, I uh, hope they found that interesting. Um, uh, I think I will order some gold foil. I might order some gold leaf as well, which is uh, a little bit thinner. I think gold foil is supposed to be something like 25 times thicker than gold leaf. Um, but now I know I've got something that I can work with, I'll have a play with that. So, I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.